Hello, BookTube. It's Tuesday, even in Vermont, on a very hot and very beautiful day. These, this, this has been a stretch here in, in small town Vermont of hot, humid days. Uh, the cumulonimbus clouds are, are piling up. You can tell from that that, are, that some sort of front change is going to happen. And you can look at the news and see that some sort of front change is going to happen. That the days aren't going to be encroaching on 100 degrees Fahrenheit in just a little while. In 24 hours, that system is going to start to break. But boy, oh boy, really hot June days have a magic of their own. And it's enhanced when everything around you is budding out green <laughs> everywhere. So, so it's been very nice. But even in Vermont... It's Tuesday, and even in Vermont, on Tuesday we do tags. Uh, and I have to preface this tag with a note. <laughs> a, note of, a rare note of correction. <laughs> in my earlier video today, I don't know what order you're going to watch these things in, but I did a mail haul today. And in that mail haul, I mentioned that Frida, my little dog, had never met a chicken. And I was corrected. <laughs> well, and I, it's amazing to me that I didn't remember it. Of course, at the old house, here, I'm, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm vacationing with Mark Richardson of Richardson Reads, another booktuber. And he's pretty much the only person in the world who would move from a very old house to an even older house. <laughs> but at the old, old house that he lived in, the old farmhouse, uh, he, I think a lot of you will remember the story. It was absolutely hilarious. The house was visited by a giant red rooster. Didn't belong to anybody and didn't want to leave. <laughs> he, just, he just camped out on the porch and Frida met him many times. He was considerably bigger than she was. And he did not like the look of her at all. And oh my God, up close, you should have seen the talons on this thing. You look at the, the beads of scaly skin on, the, on that thing's yellow feet, you don't have any doubt that birds are a descendant of dinosaurs. So it's not true. So Frida has met a chicken. She's met a rooster. She's met uh, alpacas. Yesterday she met a goat. So she's, doing, she's doing okay. Um, so that's a correction. Frida has met a chicken. Uh, uh, Mark caught that right away, and he said something that's absolutely true. He said, there are going to be people who are going to remember <laughs> that I posted pictures of Frida meeting a chicken. So I thought I, I thought I would correct that. But the tag we have today is from an ongoing series at Jim's Books, Reading, and Stuff. He did a while back an uh, alphabet tag that was half the alphabet, and then another tag that was the other half. He decided to just go back and do the alphabet letter by letter, and it's lots and lots of fun. And today, we're up to D. We're up to the D tag. I'll leave a link. To his original tag. These are so much fun. I, I, I'm going to tag some people, but I encourage you all to do it. Uh, and there are many D-related prompts. There are none for Donahue. A little bit of a shortcoming here, but we'll, we'll push on. Uh, so the first one, first prompt is D is for Doll. What is your favorite book by Ronald Doll? <laughs> and I hate to say this because I know he's a bit of a favorite on BookTube, but I don't like anything the man wrote. I've read it all. And there's a vast amount, and I've read it searching for the kind of magic that people have reported in reading him, and I have just never experienced it. No ill will. I'm not saying that, that it's, this is not a Cormac McCarthy thing. I'm not saying that I read him and found that he was unworthy of love. Nothing like that. It's just none of that magic worked on me. So he goes into the category of authors that I, I'm not, there's a large category. You might not think it's large from watching this, this channel, but it is. There's a large category, category of authors where I'm not ruling them out. I will come back to them. Magic is an odd and unpredictable thing. So it could be that I just didn't approach him in the right light. Uh, so I, I don't have a favorite book by Dahl. Uh, prompt number two is D is for Doctor Who. What is your favorite book about time travel? Notice the switcheroo there. I would have expected better from Jim. If you're going to make a Doctor Who prompt, it should be about Doctor Who. Uh, but in, it, as it is, you are spared me pontificating about Doctor Who. My, my Doctor Who experience has undergone a sea change for a long time, 35 years. I had a favorite Doctor, and I'm pretty sure that that has changed. But Jim doesn't want to hear about it. <laughs> so what is the prompt? What is your favorite book about time travel? For me, this is Doomsday Book by Connie Willis, which I also consider to be her greatest novel. She is, she is terrific. I don't remember reading anything by her that I didn't love. But Doomsday Book is special. And it has an extra resonance now that it didn't have. It was written I, 30 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, something like that. And it's about time travel. There's an institute uh, in the future that has developed time travel to the past and has noticed that the raw, unthinking current of time itself stops you from creating paradoxes, stops you from disrupting the continuum. So unlike in, in almost all other time travel fiction where the time travelers themselves have to worry about that, if you worry about, you know, falling in love with your own grandmother or something like that, in Willis's view, time doesn't allow that. 
it just it, it protects itself so to speak it's not sentient in the novel but it protects itself so if you want to go to a period and it would cause some sort of paradox you suddenly end up just skewed of it a little a few minutes a few days even a few years depending on how big the paradox is and you just have to figure it out you have to make your way from there and the plot line is complicated by the fact that the person who goes back in time unbeknownst to them when they go back in time is suffering from wait for it try not to shut the video off a new virus the future where time travel is invented is suddenly confronted with a pandemic of a hitherto unknown virus so the time traveler arrives back in the Middle Ages and promptly collapses uh, and has to be nursed back to health. And we get the story of the, of the virus in the future as well. And uh, I reread the first half of this book. One of you was kind enough to send me an ebook, uh, And I reread it just recently. I read it in the winter, I think. And you, just what you'd expect. I imagine this is going to be true for all of us forever. Where we go back and reread some old book, whether it's... Uh, the beginning of the Decameron or whatever, anything that deals with a pandemic of any kind, and suddenly it has much more resonance than it used to have. That is certainly true here with quarantines and r knots and whatnot. But I, I shouldn't let that, you know, I shouldn't give you the impression that's the, the bulk of the book. The book is terrific. Humane, wise, wonderful, and impeccably written. So it, the, this stand is a, as a recommendation, not only of Doomsday Book, but of Connie Willis in general. Uh, then the next prompt is D is for dark. What is the darkest book you have read? Uh, I just, I don't, I don't know for sure what number one would be, uh, but I just yesterday found a book that is certainly in the running. Jayton, Satan, His Psychotherapy and Cure by the unfortunate Dr. Kastner, J.S.P.S. By, by Jeremy Levin, which starts out as a kind of a lark. What if Satan appeared through a computer to a psychotherapist and wanted therapy sessions? But it gets much worse than that. Oh my, it gets much, much darker than that. Oh, virtually every outre iniquity that you could possibly list. If we're talking fiction here, I see book and I automatically think fiction. If it's nonfiction, I, then it would be Robert Lifton's The Nazi Doctors, hands down. Worse even than The Rape of Man King, because these, these men all took an oath to do no harm. All of them did. And oaths don't know national boundaries. The, the Nazi Doctors is brutal reading just brutal uh but i'm assuming since the word book turned up on booktube i'm assuming we mean novels and satan would be a really good example of that including the climax of one of the many plot lines in the books involves a collection of eyeballs uh, that will <laughs> will leave you changed it will leave you pale and trembling uh so that's, now that i think of it when i was, when I was looking at this prompt i realized there's a lot of evil in that book just like there's a lot of good in Creator by Jeremy Levin. Lots of hard times, but there's a lot of good in that book. It resonates with good, uh, which I'm sure was intentional, right? Before Jeremy Levin sold out to Hollywood and wrote The Legend of Bagger Vance, he wrote two really good novels. I'm sure that everything in them is intentional. Uh, well, the next prompt is Dickens, and we're out of Has Steve Reddit territory, so there are no face palms anymore. I'm just gonna read the prompt and try to control myself. D is for Dickens. How many Dickens novels have you read? I'm going to be charitable here and remember what I'm sure Jim had in mind when he wrote this, which is that a lot of young people watch book two. Uh, I will simply state I have read them all. Okay. <laughs> D is for dictionary. Uh, in these, the internet years, do you still use physical paper dictionaries? I do not. I tried for a long time. I used to have a shelf on my desk of reference works that I used. And one of those was the great fourth edition of the American Heritage Dictionary in hardcover, which is not only incredibly useful, but incredibly beautiful. It's got full color inset photos instead of uh, cheap little drawings. And it's amazing. And it, in addition to all of the, the definitions all throughout, it also has notes on usage all throughout. And they're amazing. They're amazingly good. It's got a white dust jacket. I know there's a copy here. and. It's actually worth having and, and interesting to page through, but it's huge and it takes up shelf space. And I realized after a while of looking at mine, once the internet took off, once I had the internet everywhere, I realized I don't use my works of reference. I don't, even the best of them, even the best of them, like, like, you know, the biographical dictionary, some of those are beautifully written. I don't use them anymore 
for simple reference, I use I use whatever device I'm on. No need to get up across the room and go looking and maybe fall down a rabbit hole and get back to your work an hour later. None at all. If I need to know uh, when the Battle of Lepanto took place and who the people were involved and what the casualty numbers were, it's two seconds to look it up. I don't need to go finding it. And the same thing is true with words. So I don't bother. Uh, and that, uh, believe me, that feels like a lack. But uh, I, I, my favorite, uh, do I still use a paper dictionary or a a dictionary? No, I don't. But I do have a favorite. If you ever see the big fourth edition American Heritage Dictionary, you might really like having it. If you see it at a yard sale or something and it's $2, it's well worth the money. Unlike other dictionaries, I believe it is better than all of the hardcover dictionaries that came out at the same time. Uh, then D is, the next prompt is D is for dagger and detective. Uh, so we have two D prompts here. So Jim was able to throw two D prompts into this prompt, but could he fit Steve Donahue in? No. Uh, what was the last detective novel you read? That also is a Vermont purchase. I read it uh, just a couple of days ago uh, on the nightstand. It's The Crocodile on the Sandbank, uh, the first Amelia Peabody mystery by uh, Elizabeth Peters. These are She's a Victorian, not Elizabeth Peters, but, but Amelia Peabody is a Victorian Egyptologist uh, who solves crimes. Uh, she's not very good at it, in my opinion. And uh, the, the actual plot parts of the Amelia Peabody books seem to me to be very intentionally secondary to everything else that's going on. So I'm not willing to fault the author. I think it was a, a conscious choice, but it does technically count. There were no daggers, if I remember correctly, in that book, but there was plenty of detective work. Uh, then the next prompt is D, is for Dostoevsky. What is your favorite Dostoevsky novel? Thanks to courtesy of the house here in Vermont, I have a prompt. That would be Crime and Punishment, and not just any Crime and Punishment. The Michael Katz translation. I don't know exactly why I prefer it, but I do. <laughs> oh, give me a break. If you, had a, if you had your name on the cover of a Brian Postman, you'd show it every chance you got, too. You'd have a tattooed on your back, for Pete's sake. <laughs> I would have a tattooed on my back, but there's no room because the tattoo of the paperback junkie takes up so much room. <laughs> Anyway, it's, it's, it's crime and punishment. Uh, and it will be forever unless I get a blurb on the idiot. <laughs> uh, then the next prompt is D is for diversity, with a capital D. Which book from your reading ticked the most diversity boxes? Uh, my answer to this is that I have no idea. I don't pay attention to any such things. I don't care about them, and neither should you. Uh, so we'll just go on to the next prompt. Uh, D is for drawing. Who is your favorite visual artist? I'm going to stand my ground here and say Sir Edwin Lancier. Yes, I know. He doesn't paint blank canvases. He doesn't paint ill-conceived red squares and charge you a million dollars for them. I know he doesn't stand on a canvas on the floor while people are filming him just randomly slopping paint from buckets onto the canvas. He's not going to do anything with that paint. The guy who does that is just going to walk around in it, then stand it upright, put it in a, on, a, on a backing, and sell it for millions of dollars. It has no art in it at all. Necessarily, it has none. If you are standing there just slopping paint at random, you can't even claim some sort of mystical artistic input. You have none. The guy who wires your phone down the hall could have taken your place and produced the same thing. Utter fraud. An utter fraud. Sir Edwin Lancier had talent, he had craft, and he had a love of dogs. <laughs> he would, he, you should look him up. Wikipedia, I'm sure, has a couple of JPEGs of his artwork. I'd be willing to bet you'll recognize some of it, and I bet you'll like it. It's lovely, absolutely lovely, and it has a lot more artistic detail than you would think. It's not just saccharine. And uh, he's my favorite visual artist, and he was also Queen Victoria's favorite visual artist. Okay? Uh, that's it. That is the D tag. Lots and lots of fun. I hope all of you do this, but I tag, I have four dudes. My tag section, who do you tag, is drenched in testosterone. <laughs> uh, and I think they're all fairly new. To booktube so i wanted to tag them in case i think in one case i might be the first person tagging him but i wanted to give them tags you know so to, to keep them in the community uh, so the first one is david wiley you, you, you've probably seen comments from a lot of these people on your own videos uh david wiley jordan parsons sean o'donnell and gareth howells i tag all four of those dudes <laughs> to do the d tag. <laughs> and i will leave links to them down below so that is it that is the d tag on tag tuesday up here in vermont uh just earlier today i took I took the bean out for a very short walk. It is still, it's got to be in the 90s outside. It is, there's a, there's a change of, of air mass coming, but it's not here yet. It's still marvelously, 
hot and humid outside, which is fine for me, but it's not fine for Frida. She, she overheats, and unlike previous dogs I've had in the past who overheated, she doesn't tell me. She's, she's all nerve and energy. She's all will. So she just keeps barreling along, and you know I don't want her to barrel along while I'm thinking she's okay, and then have her keel over in the dirt. Uh, and dirt is what we call pavement up here, okay? <laughs> and if you're asking, well, why don't you walk her on the sidewalk? My answer would be, there aren't any. <laughs> I took her out on a brief walk in the heat, and we met uh, we met a woman who lives up the road, and she has she has a basset hound. She has a sweet, sweet basset hound named Princess. And I got to talking. Uh, it's easy for me to do. And eventually I said, can I meet her? Would you mind bringing her out? And she did. And it was the first time that Frida's ever met a basset hound. Because Frida came to me too late to meet my own basset hound, Lucy, my little hippo. She, Lucy was gone by the time Frida came to me. So it's the first time she's ever met a basset hound. I'm not sure that, Lucy, that, that uh, Frida was completely certain that Princess was, in fact, another dog. But Princess was so adorable. <laughs> so... It's a special day, not only because I'm doing a tag in small town Vermont, but because for the first time in five years, I was face smooched by a basset hound. And that, that was nice. <laughs> that was very nice. <laughs> so so that, that's the day. That's pretty much the highlight. <laughs> that's about the tempo that things work on a hot summer day in Vermont. Uh, but that's the D tag. I hope you all do it. I'm sure that you will. The, Jim's alphabet tags are kind of making the rounds, and I like that. And we'll move on to uh, E next. He had a perfect opportunity. To, to weave a prompt around me for D, and he didn't. His next chance doesn't happen until the winter with the S tag. <laughs> we'll just have to hope he's come to his senses by then. <laughs> Thank you, book two. <laughs>